Another interesting thing that uh, I think only some of you heard, but that pole that you see in the middle, mm -hmm. that was part of a celebration that they had the third week in September. They celebrated San Geronimo Day. San Geronimo is the patron saint of the Pueblo. So that's their big celebration. And uh, they hang sacrifices at the top of that pole. So they would have had like a gutted goat and some melons and squash and that kind of thing. And they usually will find that a, a young guy that shimmy up that pole and then they'll stand on the tippy top of that pole, cut down the, the stuff that's up there and then give it as an offering to the governor and the war chief. So yeah, amongst a lot of other things, it's a couple day celebration, but that's what that pole was for. It's a pretty fun celebration. Well, the Taos Pueblo is a number one sought-after destination of people who come to Taos. And although there wasn't a tour today, at least you guys got to go in, which is good, because sometimes they'll close for for the for some things like a, a funeral. They'll close, and you won't know about it until you get out here, and they turn you around, and so people can be quite saddened by that. But at least you got to see some of it today, which is good. But another reason that people like to come to Taos is for the art scene. We have a huge art scene here in Taos. And it all started back in 1898 with two men, Ernest Blumenschein and Bert Phillips. They were studying art in France. And their art teacher told them to go out to the southwest and paint it before it's gone. So they started in Colorado and they loaded
traffic light. If at that light you turn left, now heading west for about eight miles, that road will be 64 west, you will come to eight miles later the Rio Grande Gorge Bridge, which by the way is the second highest suspension bridge in the U.S. The first highest is in Colorado. And it's pretty cool as you can drive across this bridge and then on the west side of the bridge is a rest stop. You can park your car there and then get back out and walk across the bridge. But once you're halfway across the bridge, you're now 650 feet above the water below. And if a trolley or a semi drives across it, it gives the bridge a nice rattle. It's a pretty cheap thrill. <laughs> but another mile and a half beyond the bridge, still heading west on 64, you'll start to see these weird looking sculptures on the right hand side of the road and you'll wonder, what are those? Those are the Earth ships. They all face the south for optimum solar exposure and that's where all their whimsical facades are too. Did you see those? Or Panini? Well, the last time we came here, we were wondering. Oh, yeah? Well, that's what they are. Um, like I said, they all face the south, but on the north half of the houses, they're all underground. So if you yeah. drove from the opposite direction, you'd hardly notice anything. So, uh, yes, they're pretty interesting, these Earth ships. They've even converted one of them into a visitor center where you can give yourself a self-guided tour. But if you instead, so there's a couple few, few things to do out on the west side, but if instead of that traffic light, instead of turning left to go to the earth ships in the gorge, if instead you turn right, heading towards House Mountain, that road is called 150. And if you continue on 150 for about eight miles, the road will come to a town called Arroyo Seco. Arroyo Seco is called the jewel of Taos County. And when you get out there, you'll see why. It's just this sweet little mountain town, cute little shops, a lazy little river running through it. An actress, Julia Roberts, has a ranch out in Arroyo Seco. She's spotted around town pretty frequently. As a matter of fact, this Sid's food market here on the left, she, that's where she's seen most, doing her own grocery shopping. She had, a, Julia Roberts had a ranch built out on, or a, a chapel built on her ranch that she was then married in back in 2002. But if you continue then beyond Arroyo Seco for another eight more miles on 150, still heading east, the road will dead end to what's called the Taos Ski Valley. The Taos Ski Valley in the winter is a ski resort town. But in the summer, they try to keep a lot of other fun stuff going on there. So you'll find that they've got chairlift rides that will take you up and down the mountain, which is really pretty right now because all the leaves are changing colors, all those aspen trees, and you're up there on the ponderosa pines. So, so pretty. And they've got hiking trails and horseback riding, disc golf. A lot of the restaurants that are out there too have kind of got this Swiss Alps sort of feel to them. So yeah, really pretty nice out there as well. So we're coming back up through town, this time from more of a northwest approach. Check out some of the other stuff here in Taos. This big two-story adobe building coming up here on the right is our town hall. Just got a new facelift a couple years ago. And beside that is our public library. And coming up here on the left is our fire station. But what's cool about this fire station is not a lot of people know this, but inside this fire station are several works of art. And it all started with a fire at the Don Fernando Hotel. This was 1927, and all the artists that were here at that time 
didn't have any galleries to hang their art on, so they were all hanging it on display at the Don Fernando Hotel, which is now on fire at the plaza. So the artists run into this burning building, save their art off the walls, but since then it started a tradition for artists to donate their works of art to the fire department. <laughs> And if you go in there and ask to see this room, you'll find it's covered floor to ceiling, full of the most amazing art. Here on the left is Bent Street. This is, down this road is where our first territorial governor, Charles Bent, had his home beyond that building sticking out there on the left. And on the other side of this parking lot on the left where you see that two-story building with the white picket fence, that is the Moby Dickens bookshop that was the home of entrepreneur Long John Dunn. And here on the right is the Our Lady of Guadalupe Church. Serves as the main parish for the downtown area. And this little replica you see in the parking lot is what the original looked like before it burnt down in 1961. Oh. <laughs> the plaza is just to our left. And this little alleyway here on the left, if you can peek down that, you could see where we were on the plaza. Just behind this red roof building in front of us is a street called Ledoux Street. And there's just about an art gallery or a museum for everyone on Ledoux Street. Our founding art father, Ernest Blumenshine, had a home on that street, which is now a museum. Famous Navajo painter, R.C. Gorman, has a gallery on that street. He actually used to live here until he died back in 2005. And his father was one of the original Navajo coat tuckers. And also there on the Dew Street, you see the Harwood Museum. That used to double as the public library until just a few years ago. And now it's upkept by the students at UNM Tufts. Our main university of New Mexico is in Albuquerque, but we do have a branch here in Taos. And if you came up from the south, you probably passed our UNM campus. You may not have recognized it, but what you may have seen were about an acre of solar panels. Those solar panels give 100% of the energy needed to power our UNM campus. As a matter of fact, Taos is called the solar capital of the world. We do have a lot of solar activity that happens out here with um, our UNM campus and all those Earth ships are powered by the sun. We have a solar-powered radio station. Our high school just got solar panels last year, and you can choose to get your electricity through solar power and through the Kit Carson Electric Company, just to name a few. We do have a lot of sunshiny days out here. Although it may be cold, the sun still is shining, so we try to utilize our resources as best we can. This road that we're on is called Ranchitos, which means little ranches, because that's what used to be out here. different channels will be opened and closed, allowing the water to reach different
different locations throughout the Taos Valley. That way, everyone has an opportunity to have access to the water. It works really well. Even in early spring, volunteers will come out to the acequias and help pull out any overgrowth of foliage or litter that might be blocking the, the water, making sure that it has every opportunity to get to where it's going. We are up here in the high desert. It tends to get pretty dry up here, if you haven't noticed already. So we try to utilize our water as best we can.